Hey guys and welcome back to 20 Questions With and today's episode is a little bit different. So with it being the final episode of 2021 and also 20 episodes of 20 Questions, we're turning the tables on to me. Meaning that every guest we've had on the show has sent me across a video of them asking me a question. So let's see how we get on with this. Now, first off, we always start with a quick fire round, but since we've got 19 guests, we're going to have the quick fire round as one question. Kind of bending the rules a little bit. So, straight off, Porsche 911 GT3 RS. We've got Cadwell Park, dogs, garlic mushrooms, a fat burger and chips, and something chocolatey. Inspirational driver, I'm going to go Schumacher. Um, hobby is going to be... Bloody hell. So like not driving related, so we're gonna go with spending time with friends and family. Um, what's next? So hobby, and then I'm a definitely an evening person. My go-to sport would be netball. Scariest thing I've ever done was starting a YouTube channel, and describe myself in one word: it's gonna be persistent. So that's my quick fire answers. Since I cut everyone else under pressure, obviously it's only right I had the same questions as well. But now let's get on to see some of our wonderful guests that we've had on the series so far. We are at Oldham Park and um, lovely sunny day. It's a bit chilly though, but uh, a couple of questions for you, Bex. Are you all ready for uh, Bedford next week? And the second question is, um, how's your foot? Is it all good now? And the third question or the third instruction is, don't forget my marzipan chocolates. See you. Hi Graham, yes I am ready for Tuesday, I cannot wait, especially after having to delay it by a few weeks because of my ankle, I am just so excited now and as ready as I'll ever be. Now with my ankle it is pretty much back to normal, touch wood, I've not been doing any silly jumping off of beams or going to any trampoline parks ever again but it is actually stronger than what it was before thanks to my amazing physio so we are ready and raring to go and of course there is going to be marzipan. Now, with the next guest, Mito sadly hasn't been very well, so he ha didn't manage to send the video in, but I just want to wish him the best. And again, so because of that, our next guest has actually asked us two questions. Hi, Becca. Great to see you again. Uh, as you know, Perry McCarthy here, ex-Formula One driver and the original stick from BBC Top Gear. Uh, it's been great to be in touch with you over the past months on your journey toward hopefully securing the Formula Woman drive. So I know you've been working very, very hard about that. But I know that having interviewed me, that you now want me to ask you a couple of questions, and I've got some for you. So you're going to have to think about this. Question one, Becca, why do you feel you could be a top racing driver? So what have you got? Explain. The next question I'll ask you is that when people look at what it takes to be a racing driver, there's a number of attributes that you'd normally associate with that. Which one would you think is the most important attribute? Many of them are important, but which one would you describe as being the most outstanding one to be successful in this sport? That's your task. I look forward to the questions. Pardon me. I look forward to the answers. I look forward to more questions. Whichever one you decide, take care and best wishes for the 7th of December. Hi Ferry, really good to hear from you again and I hope you're well and thank you for giving me some challenging questions and getting my brain fired up this evening. So why would I make a good racing driver? Now that's a tough one because we always try and stay modest but I definitely think it's because I've got the whole package. Now everyone always says that racing driving is not just about getting in the car and being fast, yes that helps. There's a lot more to it so you've got the whole sponsorship side, you've got the whole media side, fitness, everything and I think that's where I quite luckily have that whole side of things covered so I can work well with media I'm good with people I'm gonna get in sponsorship and all that sort of side of things sort of goes in my favor a little bit more as well as hopefully being quite good in a car so I'm gonna go with that as my answer for that one and for the second one the most important attribute there is tons you've got things like speed aggression persistence but I think one that people do miss off is judgment so you've got a lot going on. And I think one thing I've learned in the car and where mistakes happen is when people's judgment isn't quite there. 
because you've got to look at weather conditions, tyre conditions. Are your tyres starting to overheat? Are they starting to cool down? What do you need to do to get the right performance? Otherwise, you're going to end up going spinning at a corner because your tyres aren't warm enough. And it's something you see quite often, especially on track days and novice days, because people don't really understand that tyres need to warm up. But also off the track, you've got things like sponsorship deals, teams, all that side of things as well. Watch and drive to survive. You see the judgment they're making in their careers and it's not just on the racetrack. So I think that is a very key element and attribute people do miss out on. Hi, Bex. Uh, my question for you is, who was your favourite Power Ranger? Hi, Sam. And your question does not surprise me one little bit. That is going to be completely random. I don't really know Power Rangers. I just know the different colours. And because my car's red, I'm going to go with the red one. I hope that's the right one. Hi, Becca. I hope you're well and uh, looking forward to your assessment on the 7th of December. So my question is, if you were lucky enough to get through and race the McLaren for a year, what would be your ambitions um, for kind of the following years and, and for the rest of your career? Hi, Katie. I can't wait to see you again on Tuesday and I hope you're really well. Um, so my ambitions for after the McLaren, um, I think... I'm trying to take it a year at a time. So with the McLaren, I'll get a feel of whether that's the side of racing I want to go into or whether there's different series that I'd maybe want to try, like single seaters. I'm not too sure yet. I just kind of want to get the McLaren drive first before thinking too far ahead. But I definitely think it's going to be a great opportunity to see what kind of cars and what kind of racing I like because everything is so, so different. And I then think from there... I'll have an idea of where I want to go the following year, but as long as I get into some sort of racing and just driving around the track fast, I'll, I'll be happy. Hi, Becca. Um, thank you so much for asking me to be a part of your final 20 questions video. Um, I think it's such a nice way to kind of wrap up the series and also quite um, like nice to look back and think that's how we actually first properly met and I think we've spoken every day since, which is mad. Um, but obviously I'm so happy to have met you um, and I'm proud of you and cannot wait to see how far you go because I know that you're going to do really well. Um, but yeah, I think it's such a nice thing that throughout Formula Woman and your YouTube channel, um, just how many people you've met how many like connections you've made um it's just lovely and yeah super proud of you um and it's also pretty fun that we get to ask you a question back even though i think i probably did that during the interview anyway <laughs> when i shouldn't have but um yeah i think my question for you is who inspires you who or what should i say inspires you um to keep going on this journey um because there's obviously going to be ups and downs um not everything's going to go smoothly what is that thing that's keeping you going um during the hard days and the good days um because i know that you are inspiring a lot of people who is inspiring you hi Isla. i know i'm seeing you soon but um yeah thank you so much for that message it was really sweet you've honestly been a rock through this whole journey so this is a really nice question and who inspires me so I always think that people can always turn around and be like Schumacher inspires me like in the quick fire questions but it goes a lot deeper than that and I think it's not just that one person you aspire to be but it's those people around you that support you as well so people like yourself Isla all my friends and family my mom my dad all of these people I've interviewed on here, they've all contributed to inspiring me to keep pushing and keep going because without that support network, you're not being pushed and you're not being sort of inspired to do better. So speaking to people that have made it or slightly further along from the journey inspires you to keep going to get to that point. People that haven't maybe necessarily made it as far yet, you kind of inspire to that because you want to help show them the way almost. And then of course, family and friends are there to push you every step of the way. And then obviously you've got the people like Schumacher, the F1 drivers, different kind of drivers along the way who do inspire you because they just have done incredible things. But I think inspiration goes more than just one person telling you or showing you what you want to be. It's more than that because you are your own person. And I think being shaped into you and your own inspiration is much nicer than just being like, I want to be like so-and-so. I just kind of want to 
do everybody proud now and that's sort of the inspiration I have now. Hey Bex, it's Chris Diamond, driver coach. Just at Vigeno for the Fulani Mondiale. As you can hear in the background, we've got some nice V12 LaFerrari XX going around. And as it's Passione Ferrari, So it's a little bit loud and hard to hear you, but I think we just got it over the sound of the Ferraris, which, by the way, sound incredible. But what ignited my passion for motorsport? Um, well, I've always loved cars, always loved going fast. Ever since my dad had a G-Series Porsche when I was very, very little, he used to sit on his knee and like steer it when we was in the driveway. And that kind of got the ball rolling with how much I appreciated and enjoyed cars and driving fast cars. But my actual passion for motorsport didn't start until I drove a Lotus. And because of that, I understood more about what a car could do and what a driver could make a car do. So I did the Lotus Drive Yourself Sensible Day that my parents got me for my 21st birthday. And I had Martin Donnelly, the XF1 driver, take me around in the car. So I drove it first and I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. I'm driving really fast. And then obviously Martin goes, gets in and I'm like, wow, how does how is this possible? And then I started researching into it more, started getting more into F1. I sort of understood it, appreciated it, but never really connected with it as much. Um, but watching Drive to Survive, as cringe as it sounds, makes you connect with the drivers and the teams because you understand more about them. And I really like that about the show, even if it has gone a little bit off tangent. But it really started to ignite this passion of wanting to get out on track and wanting to compete. And sadly, money wasn't there. But yeah, having that experience in Lotus, I ended up buying my own because I loved it so much but I couldn't afford to go on track and be doing all this track stuff so at least I had the track car feel but it was on the road so it made road driving a little bit more exciting without breaking any laws um but obviously there was just something missing no matter how much I drove the Lotus I wanted it to be on track and thanks to Formula Women that was possible but yeah I will always say my passion for automotive started with my dad's Porsche but my passion for motorsport started with Lotus and yeah, I will have one again. It will happen. But thanks to that, it's just all flourished and I can't wait. Every, every day I'm waking up waiting to be the next time on track. Hi Bex, Tish from Auto Social here. What I want to know is what's one piece of advice you would give women entering Formula Women next year that you didn't know at the start of your journey? Hi Tish, I hope you're well. So one piece of advice that I wish I knew when I first entered Formula Woman um that's a tough one actually because I found learning along the way has really helped and there's not necessarily been anything that I was like I wish I knew six months ago but as a bit of advice for anyone entering I would just say dive in because you don't want to get to the end of the assessment if I don't get through I'm not going to have any regrets and that is the main thing I wanted to come into this with because I didn't want to get through to do the assessment not get through to the final 50 or the final six and we sat there like, oh, if I'd only done this, if I'd done that, if I'd done this. Because you end up just beating yourself up. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity and just put your all into it. Because at the end of the day, there's so many more opportunities that are opening up from this. It's not just the McLaren seat. So take the leap of faith, go do it and just give it your all and have fun. Hi, Becca. It's Enzo Mucci here with your question. And the one for me is, what would you prefer to race? Spa or Monaco? Hi Enzo, I hope you're well. So Spa or Monaco to race at? So to actually race at, it would definitely be Spa because it's a lot more competitive. Monaco kind of like sets the time with qualifying. I think I'd rather actually race than be sort of sat at the front or sat at the back and just kind of your positions be determined by the day before. So Spa would just be a dream anyway. So to race there as well, it's just, it'd be epic. Okay, so my question is, out of all the tracks in the entire world, what is the one track that you think, yeah, that is a track I want to drive. That one seems absolutely amazing. I'm really interested to hear what you say. Hi Max, I hope you're well and your car's going sideways as always. But one track that I'd always want to drive at, now this is a strange one for me and I think people will be a little bit shocked, but it will be Circuit de Catalunya. And the reason I say that is because um, the very first time I sort of had a guy at kind of racing, on a simulator even though it was a cheap curry simulator it was circuit to catalonia and it was the first track i kind of got my head around so it kind of always have that little bit of a special sort of place in my heart for that 
and that's why I would love to drive it in real life one day. Hey Becca, it's me again, Michael. Now it's my turn to ask you a question and my question is, if you could be any animal, what would you be and why? Hi Michael, I hope the rest of the season's going well for you guys and fingers crossed for the final race next week. Um, so if I could be an animal, let me have a think. I kind of want to say something cool like a tiger and be quite edgy, but in reality, I'm probably going to say a dog because the majority of dogs have such a cushy life and all they do is have food, walks and sleep. I mean, yes, we kind of can't drive cars in that, but it sounds like a pretty good life to me. Hi, Bex. My question for you is going to be, you have one season racing, any budget? What series would you race in and why? Hi Katie, I can see the camera in hand there, so I'm guessing your trackside gets some photographs done. Um, One season, any budget. That's a really, really tough one. And I think, as strange as it sounds, I'm going to go with the GT Cup still because it's something I've kind of been following now a little bit and really opening my eyes to and I want to give it a go now. So I think regardless of what happens, it's one that if I did have any budget and I could go and delve into, it'd be that for sure. But after that, I'd maybe look at British Touring Cars or something like W Series, something completely different. But yeah, I'm not sure. That is a tough one. That is a tough one. Hey, everyone. My name is Claire, also known as a Naked Warrior. My question for Bex is, out of all the people that you've interviewed for your 20 questions with, who's been the person you've been most nervous about interviewing? Hi, Claire. So all the people I've interviewed, which one made me the most nervous? So an actual being nervous I'm gonna go with Graham because it was my very first interview I was quite not apprehensive but unsure how it was gonna go I'd never done anything like that before so the first time was always gonna be quite sort of daunting because it's like what if I stutter what if like it's awkward and there's no conversation and it's just a very sort of black and white interview um so it was a bit of a I hope it goes okay but for actual person, I'm going to have to go with Michael Italiano because obviously McLaren is a team I follow for F1. So actually having him and chatting to him on the screen was quite surreal. But how I've got to like, see it now is these are just normal people. These aren't someone that you just sort of end up starstruck. They're normal people. You can have a normal conversation with them and it's absolutely fine. So ever since I sort of got that realisation, yes, it's a little bit like, oh my God, I have this interview with so-and-so. You're just like, it's a normal person. They're just like you and I and... Since then, I kind of don't really get nervous, more excited now. What's up, Bex? Uh, first of all, apologies for being really slack with sending over this video. But my question to you is, being a girl in the motoring industry or the motorsport world, do you feel like you A, get taken seriously? Um, do you feel like you have the respect that you deserve? Um, and if not, are you looking at changing everybody's opinions on girls being involved in motorsport? Hi Ross, I hope you're well. So worry, I'll forgive you for taking so long to send the video in because we're here now. Um, so do I get taken seriously as a woman in motorsport? I'm going to go with yes and no. So there's certain people that have sort of opened their eyes more to women in motorsport and things like Formula Woman, W Series and platforms like that have really helped. There obviously is a few dinosaurs that are still taking time to come around to this more modern way of thinking. But overall it's not been too bad you have some negatives you have some positives and you just kind of sit pretty in the middle so there's times where sometimes if you go to track days they don't actually acknowledge you as a driver they think my dad's a driver sometimes or whoever i'm with um things like that can be a little bit of a bugbear but then things like sponsorship it works in your favor because there is thousands and thousands of male drivers trying to get that one bit of sponsorship but maybe two or three women so it kind of works in your favor and it's just I don't mind too much as much as feminism is a thing on sides like that because we do have an advantage over men in some areas um in terms of do we have respect i'd say yes and no we do get respect from people but we have to prove ourselves more and that's the one thing i found so you have to show your credibility and being a female if you had a guy in the same situations nine times out of ten they'll trust that you can drive well but being a girl you have to go out and prove yourself you have to prove your knowledge they'll question you more so if I was talking about um, my car, for example, people will question your knowledge and they don't just trust that you know it's an M55 engine. They'll be like, to, they'll ask follow on questions, basically, just to make sure you know what you're talking about. Um, so things like that. But whether I want to make a change, that is the whole reason I'm doing this as well, because I want to show to people that women can make it in most sport. We have a voice and we have um, the ability as well. I think once you're on track, there is nothing separating you between females and males and that's the nicest thing about motorsport 
and because of that i really do want to use this platform and use what i'm doing to really push more women into my sport and i hope it does inspire and get some more women into the racing seat as well and also help men understand how to acknowledge women in racing and also just treat them like a normal person like we're like one of the lads it's the easiest way um, you don't have to tiptoe around us we're here for a laugh we're here for the same reason we love cars and that just needs to be remembered hey beck harry hayek here it's your turn i've got a question for you what sparked your interest for cars hi harry so i hope you're well my interest for cars kind of picking up off one of the early questions for cars it was definitely my dad's g-series porsche that he had when i was about three or four years old i absolutely adored that thing i remember it so clearly and my memory is horrendous from when i was a kid um gutted he sold it but yeah that was the moment where i really appreciated cars absolutely loved them i really got involved with all the cars my parents had and as i got older it kind of grew more especially when i passed my test and could buy my own cars i've had 10 in five years because i just want a new car i like the excitement of different cars and very luckily the channels enabled me to drive lots of different cars so hopefully the may m2 will be staying but yeah, it all started with my dad's G-Series Porsche, so he is to blame. Hey Bex, I hope you're well. My question to you is, if you could have any car at any circuit in the entire world, what would that look like? Cheers. Hi Jay, I hope you're well. I noticed you're in the very nice new RS3 there. Um, any car, any circuit, I'm gonna go with a Porsche GT3 in manual round Silverstone GP because I absolutely adore G because I absolutely adore Silverstone GP. I think it's a fantastic track and it's one I'm starting to know quite well. So having the Porsche GT3, which is a dream car for me, round that track and a car that will suit that track so well will just be an incredible experience. So I know George is really, really busy out and about doing all his incredible photography work. So I wish him the best of luck, but we're gonna move on to the next question. Hi Becca. Uh, my question for you is, if you were given a million pounds to spend on motorsport next year, where would you spend it and why? Hi, Mike. So I'm going to dip into a loophole here because you said just motorsport, not necessarily racing. So I'm going to say I would enter a race series, something like the GT Cup, and use, I think it's about a quarter of a mil, half a mil, investing into that. And then with what's left over, I would love to set something up to get more women into motorsport, whether that be a school, a coaching system with some of the best coaches out there and just really kind of build a network together on track side and do something like that. I'm not entirely sure where, but that's where the train of thought is going. So I'd love to obviously race myself, but help get other people out there, maybe train them in media or something like that. That is kind of where the train of thought is going. I know that your car sounds absolutely terrible. What, what do you think is the best sounding car of all time? Hi Lee, this question does not shock me at all after your massive debate on how bad the M2 sounds, which I'm still slightly offended by. If I'm gonna have to pick the best sounding car, it is gonna be, this is a really tough one. I'm gonna say the Ferrari 458 because the naturally aspirated V8 sounds absolutely incredible. And the way that car makes that sound is just, it is shocking and I love it. And driving it as well was absolutely amazing. So that's gonna be my car of choice if I'm not allowed to say anything that I've said BMW. So I hope that's an acceptable answer. So guys, that is the 20 questions from myself. I hope you enjoyed that and got to know a little bit more about me. If there's ever anything you guys want to know, just pop down in the comments below and I'm more than happy to answer any questions. And my inbox is always open. But we're going to try and do a second series next year. I'm not entirely sure when, but I have really enjoyed doing the series. And thank you to all the guests for coming on. I've loved hearing about all your experiences and advice. And I hope you guys have learned something too. So for now, you guys know the drill. To make my journey your journey, like, follow, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.